legend, the classic, the original, however you want to brand it, I'm sure there's plenty of ways to spin Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare, and the way it presented. Along with the title comes tons of fond memories from not only the community as a whole, but probably a personal connection that for many was the catalyst for sticking around the franchise and undoubtedly the title that bolstered the franchise's success to unseen heights at the time. 2007's Modern Warfare was a thing of beauty in its own right, but how does it play today? Nearly 12 years after its official launch on November 5th of 2007, does it still keep up? Does it still feel the same? Is there even a player base to connect with? Today we're going to dive deep into the nostalgia train and what Modern Warfare is like in 2019. If you want to see more deep dives like this and more retrospective looks at past Call of Duty titles, feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I want to get back into doing this kind of stuff, and if you enjoy it, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one. That said, for those that never got to experience COD 4 in its prime or even close to its prime, the title was one that gained incredible ground in a short period of time. Interestingly, the game initially met a ton of pushback from publisher Activision, as Infinity Ward wanted to create the game that we got of Modern Warfare, and Activision didn't want to test the waters outside of a large, but on the decline World War II market at that time. Crazy to think about that in another timeline, Modern Warfare may never have happened and as a result, could have changed the course of the franchise's history as well. The game pushed the boundaries with its riveting gameplay, a narrative focused around the potential of real-world conflict set in modern times and not too far out of the realms of possibilities. The game set to capture a pull from the headlines narrative, and that rang true for many players and viewers and set the tone for the rest of the game's experience. On the multiplayer end, it was addictive and innovative compared to where the franchise had been up until that point. Changing the scenery was one thing, but changing the core fundamentals of how the game reacted to the player and vice versa was something that ultimately changed the franchise forever and helped shape the entirety of the first-person shooter genre in the coming years. Weaponry pulled from modern-day military armories, factions pulled from real-world battlegrounds, maps that innovated and set the precedent for design in the franchise for years to come, and killstreaks that added an entire new dynamic to how you play the game among other things were just a small glimpse at what made it so simplistic but so memorable. The addictive nature of wanting to level up, wanting to be the best in each lobby, wanting to unlock things like the Golden Desert Eagle, kept players coming back and it made waves not only in the market, but the entire video game world. That was then, and it helped shape the memories and expectations for gamers today. No doubt the franchise has gone a long way since then, both in a positive and negative direction depending on who you ask. There's certainly more longevity with added grind-worthy incentives in various games, but alterations like advanced movements over the years certainly weren't everyone's cup of tea, though it did open up a new aspect that drew in quite a few new players as well. But with the release of this upcoming fall's introduction and soft reboot of the Modern Warfare series, what does COD 4 Modern Warfare feel like in 2019? Let's talk about the player base, because I myself experienced this on Xbox One, or I guess via Xbox One's backwards compatibility, both Xbox One and Xbox 360's player base. PlayStation 3 doesn't account for this one, nor does it on Steam, but from my time playing here over the past couple of days, it was around an average of somewhere of 3,000 players or so, give or take a handful of players here and there, depending on the time of day. Of course, you're going to see more probably in the afternoon Eastern Standard Time than you would say 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time or even midnight Eastern Standard Time because then you account for it being later at night and also early in the morning for Europe as well. But roughly 3,000 players online whenever I was jumping on and checking this out. Not too long ago, there was much, much more when it was first introduced to the backwards compatibility program. Everyone jumped on at that point. But as time has dwindled down and of course 12 years after the official launch on Xbox 360, it is something that's, that's dwindled down and while it's not a whole lot, it is still a decent amount of players. 3,000 may not seem like a lot compared to other recent titles, of course, ones that are within this last decade, but for a 12-year-old game, that was pretty solid. And actually, the curious part here is that I was still finding games relatively fast. At least for me, it may very much so differ for you depending on where you're at and where you have to connect from, because we'll talk about it in just a second. Peer-to-peer -peer was still a thing at this point, so you're connecting to the players that you're playing with, not a centralized server like you would in recent titles. But depending on where you're at, depending on where that player base you may be situated with, I'm sure it'd be a lot easier to connect to somebody when you're on the Eastern Seaboard or Western Seaboard instead of in the middle of the United States or something geographically 
exactly similar elsewhere in the world. The larger clusters of players will obviously connect to each other quicker than somebody that is an outlier of a thousand miles or so. But by this point in the B-roll, you'll probably have seen a couple of flashes of me searching for games and immediately jumping into one. So surprisingly, even though there only is about 3,000 players online at the time of this recording and other recordings, I still found a game pretty quickly, and that was really awesome to see that depending on the game mode, you may still run into the same players, but it created this feeling that it was still alive and still well. As always with all throwback titles, all games that aren't the current game or just removed the current game, you're going to end up probably having the best experience just searching for regular TDM matches because that's where the general populace ends up grouping into, so therefore you'll have a better player base to connect with outside of maybe there may be three lobbies total in Search and Destroy or something like that and you have a bad connection to all of them. But talking gunplay and everything, it's definitely different compared to what we're used to now. Obviously, we'll talk about this a little bit further here in just a second, talking about one thing that I totally forgot was a thing, but hit reg, hit detection, lag, all that kind of stuff. It's definitely more relevant in these games and these older titles than in current titles, just because of, again, dedicated server systems, hybrid server systems, and all things like that. If I recall, COD 4 servers run on 20 hertz servers, whereas current titles in the industry run at about a minimum of 60 hertz, meaning 60 refreshes, sending data back and forth between the server a second. So that means that even things like Black Ops 4, they'll send data back and forth between you, the player, and the server 60 times a second. So you, in theory, should be able to register as many shots as hitting because you end up having that constant refresh of data. Whereas COD 4, the original Modern Warfare, ran at only one third of that data sender. Rate. So therefore, in theory, the data was only one third as accurate. And as a result, this would create your things where you'd end up putting three bursts of an M16 into somebody and you just finally get that kill or something. Whereas when you take a look at the TTK, the damage and all things of those weapon stats back in the day, it should have sufficed within one or two bursts if you hit every single shot. It also, in theory, creates that commando lunge that you'll end up seeing where you'll put shots into a player that won't register, but then you'll end up getting knifed through all of that because the server doesn't process. It just marks that melee as a kill at that point. So therefore, it is definitely way different than any game, not even just Call of Duty right now, but any game out there in the market because it is outdated tech if you look at it in one way. Of course, it's the classic and that won't change, but it definitely is different from today's standards. Now, the one thing that I totally forgot about up until one random game where it did happen, I joined in and then immediately the game ended and I was like, wait a second, we didn't hit score limit, we didn't hit time limit. And there it was, the prominent host ended game. That was something that I totally forgot about and haven't seen since like Modern Warfare 3, but that was something that was still a big thing back in the day because again, peer-to-peer -peer connections. No hybrid or dedicated systems. It would end up putting 12 players together and then whoever had the strongest connection between all of that would in theory end up getting host. Of course, it didn't always work out like that, but that means that if that player dashboarded, it would end up immediately ending the game. If they ended up backing out, it would try and switch the host to somebody else and you'd have that host migration that was so popular in Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 and to an extent in Call of Duty 4, but it just shows again the complete difference in what you'd end up seeing compared to today's time. I know there's a lot of talk of people saying, wow, Call of Duty definitely isn't on a hybrid or dedicated system, but these games like COD 4, World at War, Modern Warfare 2, if you want to see a true non-dedicated system or true non-hybrid system, these games will be perfect to showcase that because of things just like this where hosts can still end game. One thing that I honestly thought I would experience a lot more, and maybe I got tremendously lucky going back and playing for the past couple of days, is that I didn't really run into any modded lobbies. There was one situation where one player came in and they had the sort of upper left text chat log, but that was about it. Something you'd probably see comparable to, say, Steam's in-game chat client, but on Xbox One and Xbox 360. Naturally, that doesn't happen, but that was about the extent of the modded lobbies, if you want to call it that, but nobody had God mode in my time here during this. Nobody had any infections or anything like that. Nobody had to ranking or ranking up lobbies. So maybe I got lucky because I remember there being quite a few back in the day whenever I examined this a year ago or two years ago at this point, but as of right now, I'm still going to extend the shadow of doubt that I probably just got lucky, but I don't know, maybe jump on, you'll have a good time here at this one. And the biggest thing that I want to discuss here out of this is, was a refreshing change of pace. With everything that we see in recent Call of Duty titles, was it still as fun to go back and play COD 4 today? Honestly, yes, I had an absolute blast. It was simplistic, refreshing, and it was just a lot of fun. 
that was something that it was nice to see no mtx as we'd see in black ops 4. it was nice to see a modern shooter like we'd see well not since modern warfare coming up this fall it was nice to see an arcade shooter at its absolute finest when we think about the arcade shooter genre in recent years it's been warped to be something absolutely insanely intricate depending on how you look at it and what games you look at in that but COD 4 really, to me, defined arcade shooter. It was pretty much plug and play. You ended up jumping in. There was not really any customization outside of a handful of camos and a handful of weapons that you could end up putting into your creative class and things like that. But when you think about it, three, five, seven kill streaks. Simple. Plug and play. You get those. Well, you get them. You don't have to select anything. Map design always put you back in the fight. Not too many maps that were insanely big at the time. And honestly, sometimes spawns didn't work out in your favor. There are many times, maybe even in the clips you'll see, where I ended up spawning almost right where I died so right back in the action quite literally to where it got me killed again sometimes game chat was still a thing and surprisingly I heard quite a few people in my time in 2019 here over the past couple of days playing a lot of people going into game chat and just casually talking obviously there's still that trash talk you'd be used to but that's something you don't see in a regular lobby today either so it was all really just, again, a refreshing flashback to 2007, 2008, 2009, depending on when you picked up the copy of the game and when you first got your hands on the franchise. It was different, it was nice, and it was fun. And truth be told, though I probably won't put much of it up here on the channel, I'm probably gonna go back and play a lot more here. I just had a good time, and it just felt right. It felt refreshing, it felt just good. That's where I'm at here at this one, and in 2019, while it might not statistically and player base be the most alive game in the franchise, it still felt like it, it still felt good. After picking up my controller, my Xbox controller for the first time in months now at this point, jumping back into it took a few games to get used to, but once I got in the groove of it, once I got in the hang of everything, I felt right at home. So 2019, does it still play well? Is it still something worthwhile and worth jumping back into? Absolutely. If you're not entirely too fond of how everything's are going right now within Black Ops 4, you just want to kind of reacclimate yourself to a modern setting. Sure, there's Modern Warfare Remastered, but if you really want to explore the original, definitely worth dusting off the old 360 or if you have an Xbox One, putting that in there and playing backwards compatibility. But give it a go. That said, that's we're gonna wrap it up. That's what Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare is like in 2019. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Is there anything in particular that you missed? Any nostalgia you absolutely love and wanna reminisce on here in the comments? Is there anything that you'd like to see next in terms of an in 2019 series? Whatever it is, feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Call of Duty, all things Black Ops 4, Modern Warfare coming up and all things in between. We got you covered here with the best of updates, news, information, tips, tricks, all that good stuff. So if any of that interests you, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. And if you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best place to get connected with us on YouTube. Practically live on both those. If you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. Well, that's that out of the way. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Modest Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.